So I saw this guitar on Facebook Marketplace less than 24 hours ago and I just had to buy it. It's the Ibanez NDM2. This is the Noodle signature model from The Offspring and I absolutely love these guitars. I'm a huge fan of The Offspring. I absolutely love their music and to be honest, they are what inspired me to learn guitar in the first place many years ago. But nevertheless, I think these guitars are absolutely stellar, especially for playing live. They're really, really light. They've got a really nice action on the neck and they're just really simple, great sounding guitars. For years, I've been using the older model, the NDM1, which is amazing. It sounds really, really great. But with the gaffer tape finish, I've noticed that it's starting to wear quite badly. There's places where the gaffer tape is lifting up, the lacquer's wearing really, really thin. And to be honest, I just don't want to ruin this guitar anymore. So I'm gonna put it into retirement and I'm gonna start using the NDM2. Now, tomorrow, this NDM2 is going to my guitar tech. I'm gonna change out this bridge pickup. This is just all stock at the minute. It's as it comes out of the factory. But I'm gonna change this one here to a Dimasio Super Distortion. Most of what I'm doing when I play live is rhythm guitars, but there is the occasional lead part and riff. So I need something really, really meaty and really, really chunky. And I love the sound of the DiMaggio Super Distortion for that. But what I thought would be an interesting comparison would be to do a before and after. So we'll take a listen to what it sounds like now, just with all of the stock pickups. And then we'll also take a listen with the DiMaggio Super Distortion pickup fitted as well. Drop a comment, let me know what you think. Okay, so I've just picked up the uh, guitar from the Guitar Tech in Leeds. Let's take a look, that pickup swap has been done. <laughs>
Now we've heard the difference between those stock Ibanez Infinity pickups and the Dimazio Super Distortions, I would love to know your thoughts, so drop a comment and let me know. Are those Super Distortions worth it, or do the stock Infinity pickups sound just fine? Maybe you even think they sound better. Please let me know, I'd love to know your thoughts. My personal opinion is that those stock pickups in the NDM2 are light years ahead of the stock Infinity pickups in the NDM1, the original gaffer tape guitar. I think they've come on immensely. When I was originally gigging with the NDM1, the gaffer tape guitar, I wasn't happy with the sound that I was getting and that's what led me to get the Dimazio Super Distortions and switch that out. However, when I brought the NDM2 home and I played it just with those stock pickups, I was absolutely blown away. The sound was immense and it was very, very similar to what I was used to hearing with the Dimazio Super Distortions in. However, because I'd already got the Dimazios, it just kind of made sense to put those in and continue with sound that I've been enjoying live. As good as those Infinity pickups sound, I do think that the Dimazios are a little bit tighter in the low end and I think you really notice this when you have the amp really overdriven. I think when we were playing through the Orange Rock Verb and we were doing the palm muting sections, that sounded really, really good. It sounded really, really tight. In the Infinities, it just sounded a little bit more bloated and a little bit more loose. But we really are splitting hairs here and those Infinity pickups did sound so much better and so much closer to the Dimazios than they did in the original NDM1. I think on the clean setting, just running through the clean AC30, I thought they both sounded really, really great. I think when we cranked the AC30 to the crunch, to the just on the edge of breakup, I thought they both sounded really good. I thought the Infinity pickups sounded a touch brighter perhaps and the Dimazios had a little bit more low end. Neither one better or worse, it's just down to personal preference. Now if you're a songwriter or you're playing a band, if you're releasing music in any way, shape or form, then likely one of the biggest struggles that you have is getting access to opportunities to get your music heard by thousands if not millions of people. Well, one of the most important documents that you have when it comes to this is your EPK. Your EPK is kind of like your digital CV. Every time you've got a new release, you'll update your EPK and you'll send it out to radio DJs, radio pluggers, Spotify playlisters, maybe even promoters if you're wanting to get some festival slots or some bigger and better support gigs. The problem, however, is if your EPK sucks, if it doesn't look professional and doesn't contain the right information that they need to make a decision about you and your music, then they will just delete your email out of their inbox not even listening to music, they won't even give it a chance. Your EPK is that vital first impression, it's your foot in the door to telling people who you are, what you're doing, what you're all about, and also getting them to listen to your music. At that point, it's up to your music to do the talking, but your EPK is that vital first impression. So it's got to be right. Now to help with this, I've created an EPK template that you can use to design a stunning looking professional EPK that crucially contains all of the relevant information that needs to be on there. And the best part is it's completely free to use and it's super quick and simple. You can have your EPK done, up and ready to go, literally within minutes. The link's in the description below, go and check it out.